If you struggle with sleep, melatonin can be a great option proven to work without the crazy side effects you can get with prescription drugs. The most relaxing way to enjoy melatonin before bed is with a hot mug of dream hot cocoa with melatonin from our sponsor beam. It comes in a variety of delicious flavors, naturally sweetened with no added sugar and only 15 calories. I'm a big fan of the cinnamon cocoa flavor. Beam has a special early access Black Friday discount only available to my audience. No other show gets this discount. My audience gets up to 50 percent off when you go to shopbeam.com slash David and use the code David. I've been recommending you try Beam for a while now. This is their biggest discount of the year. So now is the time. Link is in the description. Upgrade your sleep with the award winning pod Four ultra by eight sleep, a smart mattress cover that fits easily over your existing mattress with adjustable temperature settings ranging from 55 to 110 degrees. You and your partner can each enjoy customized comfort on your own side of the bed. I keep mine at 60 to stay cool throughout the night. It even includes smart technology to adjust your mattress position, help reduce snoring. Plus, you'll have 30 days to see if it's the right fit for you. Visit 8sleep.com slash Pacman and enter code Pacman for $350 off. The link is in the description. If you are trying to win a presidential election, you do not want a final week of your campaign that looks anything like Donald Trump's final week, which has truly been a horror show and also has exposed really what is at stake here. Let's review the last week for Trump. First of all, at a rally at Madison Square Garden, comedian Tony Hinchcliffe says Puerto Rico is a floating island of garbage. It is absolutely wild times. It really, really is. And, uh, you know, there's a lot going on. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah, I think it's called Puerto Rico. Right. Not good. Not a good kickoff to the last full week of campaigning. We then got leaked audio from Elon Musk, who, despite publicly praising everything Trump does, acknowledges that Trump's economic plans actually aren't going to be good for the middle class. He admits it. Have to reduce spending to live within our means. Um, and um, yeah, that, that necessarily involves some, some temporary hardship, but, but it, it will ensure long term prosperity. So he says it will be tougher in the short term for the average American if Trump gets his way. We then heard from MAGA Mike Johnson who said if Trump wins, Obamacare goes bye bye. And don't mistake what this means. This means millions of Americans would lose health care coverage. There's a lot of talk. I mean, health care reform is going to be a big part of the agenda. When I say we're going to have a very aggressive first hundred days agenda, we got a lot of things on the table. Health care, that's part of the secret. It's a secret. Health care reform is not a secret. There's some some really important ideas on the table. And we have a a docs caucus, the the physicians who serve in the House, and they've got a menu of options about this thick. And I think this is part of it because if you take government bureaucrats out of the health care equation and you have doctor patient relationships, it's better for everybody, more efficient, more effective. That's the free market. Trump's going to be for the free market. You heard a little sample of that last night. We want to take a blowtorch to the regulatory state, okay? Yeah. I mean, these yeah. agencies have been ourselves. weaponized against the people. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crushing the free market. It's like a boot on the neck of job creators and entrepreneurs and risk takers. And so healthcare is one of the sectors, but we need this across the board. And Trump's going to go big. I mean, he's only going to have one more term, right? Can't run for re-election. Right. Right. And so he's going to be thinking about legacy, and we're going to, we're going to fix... Things. No, no, no Obamacare. No Obamacare. No. Yeah, the ACA is so deeply ingrained. We need massive reform to make this work. No Obamacare, although MAGA Mike acknowledges that the ACA is deeply ingrained. So uh, hardship for the middle class. Uh, no Obamacare. And then maybe uh, the worst nightmare. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. claims that if Trump wins, he, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., will have total control over America's public health agencies. A uh, polio rejoicing once it heard this. The key that I, I think I'm, you know, that President Trump has promised me is um, is control of the public health agencies, which are HHS what? and its sub agencies. 
CDC, FDA, NIH, and a few others, and then also the uh, USDA, which is uh, which you know is key to making not for me, my friends, not for me. And then finally, as part of Trump's last week, he pulls a stunt involving garbage trucks and almost falls flat on his face twice when trying to get onto the truck as he misses once and misses the handle again, recovers and then visibly struggles to get himself into the truck, not exactly projecting neither energy nor vigor. Any one of these things would be wild in an entire election cycle. All five happened just in the last week. And it reminds us of what is at stake here. Just a few more days. You know, it's a good thing that breathing is an involuntary bodily function or some of these Trump supporters might forget to breathe. Gas prices have hit a post pandemic low three bucks a gallon average nationally. Oh, but David, I was in California and ninety three cost me five bucks. That's not how we measure gas prices nationally. Gas prices at three bucks a gallon. It's the post pandemic low. And here are some Trump supporters in Rocky Mount, North Carolina, saying they're here for Trump because of high gas prices. These are issues that brought you out today. I mean, we talk about the economy, we talk about the border, inflation, abortion rights are another thing that a lot of people are talking about what's going to drive into the ballot. For you, a young guy coming out here to support Trump, what brings you out? Um, I'm a college student, so I mean, the economy is really bad right now. But it's the economy is not really bad. It's hard to afford what we, what we really need to be able to afford as a college student. Like, you know, I can just talk about gas for a long time. I mean, gas is crazy outpriced right now, and I'm like, it takes me ninety dollars to fill my truck up. That's hard to afford as a college student. I mean, I play baseball. We're at the field five hours. A okay, gas prices, gas heat. They're just so high right now, and of course, here is the gas price chart. And as you can see, uh, if we stretch this out a little bit longer, let's go to the three year. We are essentially at a post pandemic low on gas prices, just above three bucks a gallon. But gas prices being high are why he's voting for Trump. Another woman at Trump's North Carolina rally in trying to explain how terrible things are. She seems to acknowledge that actually the stock market is good and she's retired thanks to that. But she's worried that Kamala Harris is a communist and that people only support her because she's black. I don't want the stock market to crash because I'd have to go back to work because I'm retired now. OK, so she's acknowledging that even though she's retired and depends presumably on a retirement account that's invested in the stock market, nearly four years of Biden and she hasn't had to go back to work. So things must be OK, but there's more to it. So I am for Trump all the way. We need him. We do not need a communist country. Right. And Kamala Harris is a communist. People do not realize what she stands for. Well, it seems like you also don't because you've been unable to cite any communist policies. They want to vote for a black woman. That's all they know about it. They do not know what she's going to do to this country and how she's going to ruin it. There you go. Uh, retired on the stock market able to stay retired while Biden's president stocks perform better under Democrats than under Republicans. But she's worried that black Kamala, communist Kamala, whom people vote for only because she's black, will ruin her stocks and send her back to work. Truly uninformed individuals, folks, there's three days. We can't change their minds. OK, we've got to outvote them. I, I don't know how else to say it. I've got a stress ball here. OK, some of you have seen me holding it during the last few days. We, we can't all we can. Do, we've just got to vote because we're not changing their minds at this point in time. A neon orange Trump pleaded with his audience. I'm not Hitler. I'm really not Hitler. This was at the rally in Rocky Mount, North Carolina, where we uh, saw some of those interviews with Trump supporters earlier. Trump insisting to, to his audience. I'm really not Hitler, guys, OK? Please believe me. You know, many years ago, I had a father who was a great guy. He was a strong guy, a legitimate guy, strong. But, you know, he always used to tell me, never use the word Nazi and never use the word Hitler. Now we're called Nazis and I'm called Hitler. 
I'm not Hitler. What? I'm not Hitler, guys. Really, I'm not. I'm orange, but I'm not Hitler. At one point during this rally, some guy from the crowd yells out about Kamala Harris. She's an idiot. And uh, and Trump likes it. Biden. <laughs> I like this audience. I didn't say it. Well, the guys, who just said that? Who's uh, this? He can handle himself. <laughs> they scream. She's an idiot. Uh, but uh, isn't that funny? Trump really getting a kick out of insults being hurled from the crowd apropos of nothing. Trump then continuing the it's Kamala's brain. That's a problem saying that the plans of Harris are the plans of a simpleton and making yet again the same prediction about the stock market. We're going to do this and that. Oh, by the way, her plans are the plans of a simpleton. They're not going to work. We'll be in a depression like 1929. Of course, recall that when Joe Biden was running for president, Donald Trump said, oh, if Biden wins, we're going to have a 1929 style depression. And we've had dozens of stock market highs with record low unemployment, high job creation and completely reasonable GDP uh, numbers. Donald Trump also insisting that Kamala Harris paid for audience at her speech. This is Trump's insecurity about Kamala Harris having the campaign record crowd of 75,000 people. I, Kamala made a speech, not much of one, with a paid for audience. And all she talked about was Donald Trump. Of course, it was not a paid for audience. Sometimes when you press them, they'll say, well, the campaign paid to bring people in by bus. And of course, the Trump campaign also regularly provides bus transportation. The difference is that sometimes Trump doesn't give them a ride back home and strands people at rallies. Whereas when Kamala Harris provides transportation, she provides it both ways. We then got to the crux of what Trump really believes about the military, which is that there are real generals and there are fake generals. And whether you're real or fake depends on whether you support Trump. This is the, the best. Nobody's ever seen it. I just saw a General Kellogg, wherever he may be backstage. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Look at that general. He's a real general, not like Billy. Not like Billy. There you go. No one respects the troops more than me. But if you happen to be a decorated, lifelong servant of the military, but you don't vote for me, you're not a real general. And then finally, Trump, in his infinite meteorological wisdom, telling us that. It was a water hurricane. This one It was water. The water was the worst we'd ever seen. It was a water hurricane. That's what it was. And it took houses right off the foundations and ripped the foundations, yeah. concrete found. It was water. I can't even say how does it water? Um, it was water is what Trump is trying to say. And he's certainly right about that. It is the final show before election week. Wow. Wow. Let's take a quick break. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and uh, it's almost over. I don't know how else to say it. If you've ever struggled with sleep, melatonin can be a good option. No crazy side effects like the prescription drugs and proven to work. And the most relaxing way to enjoy melatonin before bed is a nice mug of dream hot cocoa by our sponsor Beam. Dream is a flavorful hot cocoa with a dose of melatonin designed to ease you into restful sleep. Comes in flavors like mint chocolate chip, chocolate peanut butter, sea salt caramel. Dream has no added sugar. It's naturally sweetened with monk fruit and only 15 calories per serving. I'm a big fan of Dream's cinnamon cocoa flavor. Warm, soothing, perfect way to wind down before bed. And as a relatively new parent, I can tell you I have a whole new appreciation for sleep being up at many various hours of the night with my daughter. And Dream Hot Cocoa puts my sleep rhythm back on track, helps me fall asleep and stay asleep longer as melatonin is clinically proven to do. Beam has a special early access Black Friday discount only available to my audience. No other show gets this discount. My audience gets up to 50 percent off 
when you go to shopbeam.com slash David and use the code David. I've been recommending you try beam for a while now. This is their biggest discount of the year. So now is the time. Link is in the description. Experience better sleep with the Pod 4 Ultra by 8 Sleep, one of today's sponsors. The Pod 4 Ultra is a smart mattress cover that fits easily over your existing mattress to regulate temperature throughout the night. You can choose a setting anywhere from 55 to 110 degrees. I like 60. I don't like getting hot when I sleep, and it makes a huge difference. If you share your bed, each side can be independently controlled. You have one temperature, your partner has another. The pod will also monitor your sleep and check out the patterns of sleep to automatically adjust the temperature to optimize rest. Snoring is no problem. The pod can gently elevate your head to reduce snoring when detected, leading to a better night's sleep for you and your partner. You can try the pod for ultra 30 nights with no risk. If it's not a good fit, send it back. My guess is you'll try it and want to keep it. Go to eightsleep.com slash Pacman. Use the code Pacman for $350 off your pod for ultra. The link is in the description. The David Pacman show continues to be made possible by the most important people in the audience, the audience, not Russian money coming through some American company. You know, we're not involved in any of that no major funders or corporate donors. It's primarily just people who like the show say, hey, I'll sign up. And many of you signing up and writing to me and saying, David, you know, I realized no matter what happens next Tuesday, we need to support independent media. If Trump wins, we will be on a defense of critical importance for four years. We need to support independent media. If Kamala Harris wins, it will be the opportunity, a one of the bigger opportunities uh, to push for and foment a sustained period of progressive change. But we need strong, independent media in order to do it. Uh, so I really appreciate everybody who's been signing up at joinpacman.com. And I do invite you to get a membership. Use the coupon code Save Democracy 24 if you so choose. And let's uh, let's get into it. A disoriented Donald Trump dropped a nasty bomb in front of a very bored audience. Now, I don't it's not what you think. What I mean is he once again brought up the term nasty and said women are being nasty to him. Trump loves using that term to describe women, not men. So let's talk about what happened. Donald Trump held a quote press conference at Palm Beach, Florida, and he was an hour late even though the event was at his house. OK, so first just visualize that the event is at his house and he's an hour late. It's supposedly to take questions. That's why you call it a press conference. Trump didn't take a single question. He made a statement and then walked away. The audience was audibly and visibly bored. And Trump started by going at Michelle Obama saying she's just being so nasty to Trump. If you're a woman and you don't lay down and let Trump walk all over you, he believes that you're being nasty. Remember when I met with Obama, his wife was very nasty to me the other day. Oh, I, that was not nice. She was very nasty. She said nasty things. I was always I was always very I was always very respectful of her, but she she got up there which shows you how how nervous they are about what's happening. But she was nasty two days ago. She got up and said some bad things she shouldn't have said. They were wrong, too. But we're going to turn our country around and. OK, so Michelle Obama is being nasty to Trump insofar as she's campaigning against him and making the case that Kamala Harris would be a better president. It's just, it's nasty, nasty. Now, one of the most disturbing things to come out of this press conference at which there were no questions taken was that Donald Trump reminded us if he wins in just a few days, he will attempt to deport legal immigrants to the United States, legal immigrants. OK, we can have the conversation about those who are here undocumented. He plans to deport legal immigrants in Ohio. They dropped 32,000 illegal aliens. They tried to give them legal terminology, but it's not. 
illegal aliens, 32,000 into a 50,000 person town, beautiful town, no problems. And now they don't know what to do. Okay. First of all, Trump says 32,000 illegal immigrants. He recognizes that's not true. They're not here illegally. The, the immigrants, uh, the Haitian immigrants in Springfield, Ohio, are here legally with something called temporary protected status. Now, Trump and some others have said they shouldn't have temporary protected status. We should get rid of that and then we should deport them. Well, you can argue that that should be changed if that's your view. But the idea that Kamala Harris did this or Joe Biden did this, this temporary protected status framework has been around since the early 1990s. It has nothing to do with Obama. It has nothing to do with Biden. It has nothing to do with Kamala Harris. But what Trump is saying here, as he did with the Iran deal, we got into the Iran deal under Obama. Iran, as far as we knew, was abiding by the Iran deal. Trump gets out of it. We can't be trusted under Trump to just stick to what we say we will do. And similarly, Trump is saying, OK, they may have this bogus legal status right now. I don't think it's legitimate and I plan to try to get it revoked. J.D. Vance has talked about this. Donald Trump has talked about this. They claim to be for law and order. But what they plan to do is actually to circumvent the law to deport legal immigrants to the United States. It's disgusting and it's deplorable. Uh, Donald Trump weighed in during the press conference at which he took no questions about what happened at Madison Square Garden on Sunday evening, the fiasco, much like what Trump said about the January 6th riots, that it was a love fest. He said it about the event at Madison Square Garden. The event at Madison Square Garden was very clearly a hate fest. I don't think anybody has ever seen anything like what happened the other night at Madison Square Garden. The love, the love, the love in that room. It was breathtaking and you could have filled it many, many times with the people that were unable to get in. But politicians that have been doing this for a long time, 30 and 40 years, said there's never been an event so beautiful. It was like a love fest, <laughs> an absolute love fest. And it was my honor to be involved. And hopefully, you know, they, they started to say, well, in 1939, the Nazis used Madison Square Garden. Well, and you know what? Every no. But can you imagine that 1939, the Nazis, <laughs> they would. But but how, how terrible to say, right? Because, you know, they've used Madison Square Garden many times. Many people have used it, but nobody's ever had a crowd like that. And I tell you what, right now, nobody's ever had love like that. That was love <laughs> in the room. And it was love for our country. Where was there more love? The January 6th riots or at the Madison Square Garden hate rally this past Sunday? Tough, tough to say where there was more love. And then finally, a very tired and visibly exhausted Trump ends his so-called press conference after taking zero questions. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, uh, another I mean, it's dare I say Kafka esque. We will be having a press conference in my own home, so I will be on time. In reality, he's an hour late and takes not a single question. He can't hack it, guys. He can't do it. He doesn't have the energy. He doesn't have the fitness. He doesn't have the capacity. He doesn't have the cognition. He just can't do it. And we need to orient ourselves. I mean, maybe if Trump wins, it's J.D. Vance is, is the president. That is they love to say Biden's not really the president. It's really, you know, it, it's it's Kamala Harris or, or it's Obama. Obama, someone else is president. We have no evidence of that whatsoever. Increasingly, especially with Donald Trump deteriorating so quickly. Yesterday, someone showed me a video of Trump campaigning in 2016 and then a video of Trump campaigning in 2024. It's it's different people. Well, David, he's eight years older. Yes, but he says that he's fine. Look at the videos from eight years ago and look at the videos from today. It's it's just completely, completely unmistakable change, unrecognizable. Uh, he can't do it. So when we think about Harris versus Trump, we also have to acknowledge and recognize we're really talking about a J.D. Vance presidency, and that is terrifying.
All right, I'm going to I'm going to do something I don't normally do on the show. I was sent a video uh, and I was told, don't watch this. Just watch it on the show for the first time and react to it. Then Spectrum News went out and spoke to some people uh, about what took place on uh, Sunday at Madison Square Garden. And what I am told is in this video are people twisting themselves into pretzels to justify continuing to support Donald Trump after the Puerto Rico is a pile of garbage Nazi rally fiasco. So let's take a listen. I've not looked at this before. That's kind of part of the exercise. Let's see what we make of it. What do you think about what took place at his rally at MSG last night? I think it was definitely poor timing. It was absolutely bad timing. I was happy his campaign said something immediately. Uh, I do think he needs to address it. I think the reality is there's several landfills in Puerto Rico that are taking over the water system. Being oh, no. He oh, no. This guy's saying it is a pile of garbage. He's like, no, there's there's landfills there. In some sense, it is an island of garbage. Poured into the oceans and really polluting and damaging the island. That could have been what he was referencing to. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. Tony Hinchcliffe, when he said there's a night, there's a pile of garbage sitting in the ocean. He means that too much of Puerto Rico has now been taken over by landfills. I'm I'm guessing that's what Tony meant. Oh, that is. Wow. But it was just poor time and just poor choice of words um, that I think that folks that are on the fence really led them away from Trump at this time. So I think that's why strategically he needs to address it. Yeah. Did it at all make you question your support for him? No, no, it, no. Um, it didn't at all. I just think it was just another poor timing for someone at one at, at his rally. Right. I do believe it could hurt, but I also learned that the reason the reference was made is because there's 29 dump sites, garbage dump sites in Puerto Rico. And this guy's do, so I this is I did not hear that they came up with the line that there is a garbage problem in Puerto Rico, and therefore it may have been a commentary on that. It's it's wild that that talking point reached all of these people. The Biden administration, Biden Harris administration are not allowing them to burn it. Um, so they're the ones turning Puerto Rico into a garbage dump. Wow. That's what I heard. I'm He's like, it is a garbage dump. So Tony Hinchcliffe was right. The, I guess that the idea is that these are all Hispanic voters. Not sure how it, true it is. Puerto Rico's only 70 miles by 35 miles, 29 garbage dumps that they can't do anything with it. I mean, you figure it out. Does the comment and the fact that it took place at one of his largest events of the year make you question your support for him at all? No, not at no. all. No, it really does it because I'm one that I look, I look into, I research. I will look into what was said. Was this what he really said? Oh wow! So this guy's playing the thing of like I haven't even seen the comment kind of idea. And having gone to three rallies, worked two of them, and another one tomorrow, I've heard what he says, and I've lived what he did four years, you know, let's say eight years ago. You know? So this guy says he does a lot of research, but he actually doesn't know what was even said. It sounds like he's not really researching then. So for me, no, I could understand a lot of people being upset, but the reference was made due to the garbage dumps that right. are in Puerto Rico that the Biden Harris. Do we think Tony Hinchcliffe has a deep understanding of uh, refuse uh, removal in Puerto Rico? Do we think that? administration aren't allow, allowing anyone to do anything about it. So they're just piling it, piling up. So that's where the reference came. Yeah. People need to wake up and realize gold medal for mental gymnastics to this guy is they're not going to do nothing for us. The first thing I would say about the comedian last night is comedians. Are OK, so I guess it's not all Hispanic voters. This guy, I, I guess, is not Hispanic. It can be hard to tell, right? I mean, I'm Hispanic. Who, who knows? comedians and sometimes we have to laugh at ourselves and sometimes we have to laugh at situations and comedians come off with with sometimes their joke is great and sometimes it's an epic fail and and but I'm not going to sit and and harp on what a comedian said if the comedians talking about failed leadership and that was you know we, we don't know the context of how the joke was written of course we do know we don't we know all of a sudden it's a mystery what the joke was or anything about it but the fact is if he's talking about the context of Failed leadership has turned your 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 country into a trash country. Then look at Donald Trump. What 
um, eight years ago. He talked about Baltimore being a shithole city, and then Scott Pressler went in and cleaned up the city, started cleaning up trash all over the country, and look at the movement that turned into. So sometimes you just have to create an awareness about something right. in order to. Tony Hinchcliffe did Puerto Rico a service by saying, hey, your country's been turned into trash, even though it's not your country because it's the United States. So in reality, it's like, oh, what we, this has happened under our watch. And so we are just putting everybody on notice about it. So now Puerto Rico is going to fix itself. Thanks to Tony Hinchcliffe. We're supposed to believe make a positive effect in the end. My sponsor, who is um, Puerto Rican, he's the one that told me. And luckily he's He's still a fan of Trump and he knows how bad Kamala Harris has lied to this country. And Kamala. He basically said she thinks we're idiots right. and she continues to lie to us. She specifically said in a recent interview, I would never say that Trump supporters are idiots. <laughs> um, I'm, and I'm power quoting and he says, I'm, I'm still going to vote for Donald Trump. But that could have persuaded people. And he also said that he thought that if anything, he must have been paid for by the Kamala Harris right to say something. Like Tony Hinchcliffe told that joke because Kamala paid, even though the Trump organizers vetted the material and put it on the teleprompter. I, I think I've seen enough. This goes on a little bit more. If mental gymnastics were an Olympic sport, all of these people would be tied for the gold medal. So what's the takeaway? The takeaway is the election is in what 96 hours. We're not going to change the minds of these people in the next 96 hours. If this is the sort of stuff they say, let's just make sure we vote in such numbers that we make their votes irrelevant. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Don't forget that the best way to support the David Pakman show is by becoming a member, which gives you access to the daily bonus show, the regular show with no commercials. You also get access to our entire archive of every episode dating back a really long time and plenty of other awesome membership perks. Go to joinpacman.com. Joinpacman.com. I want to go over one of the funniest interviews I've seen this election cycle, and it involves a woman named Paula White who interviewed Donald Trump about his faith and his religion and many other things that are completely fabricated and made up by Trump, because, of course, he's not religious and he has no faith and he's not spiritual or any of it. Now, if you're saying, oh, you know, Paula White, the name sounds familiar, but I don't exactly remember. Paula White is the woman who started speaking in tongues once uh, and who was loosely considered a spiritual advisor to Donald Trump around the 2020 election. This is some of her. I don't even know what to call this. Some of her verbal utterances. It's worth sticking with it because when she starts speaking in tongues, it's extra cool. Strike and 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 strike until you have victory for every enemy that is aligned against you. Let there be that we would strike the ground for you will give us victory. God, I hear a sound of abundance of rain. I hear a sound of victory. I hear a sound of shouting and singing. I hear a sound of victory. Right. I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. I hear a sound of victory. I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. I hear a sound of victory. The Lord says it is done. The Lord says it is done. The Lord says it is done. For I hear victory, victory, victory. All right, but strap in and get ready for this. Victory, victory in the quarters of heaven, in the quarters of heaven. Victory, 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 victory. For angels are being released right now. Angels are being dispatched right now. Hamanda ata ata rata te da baka sanda ata ambo osa kata rite eke banda ata rike tidi asha ta. For angels have even. Okay, and a rat a tat tat to you as well, ma'am. So Trump sat down with her for an interview. You wouldn't even normally need to see the interview. Just the fact that this interview took place is enough to make us say what is happening on this planet. But Paula White asked Trump a very demure, a very mindful question. What does faith mean to you? And of course, Donald Trump didn't answer the question because faith means nothing to him. And he's uncomfortable with such a question. So he talks about random things. Let's talk about 
How is faith formed in you, and, and what does it mean to you? Well, thank you very much, Pauline. You have been. I've known you for a long time, and she's a great person, a great woman. And uh, really, it's an honor. It's an honor. It really is. And uh, she's a hard worker, too. Boy, does she work. And, I, you know, I advised her. She had some property, and uh, she grew out of the churches. She got bigger and bigger. She was going wild in, in Florida. I met her, and she called and asked for advice. Uh, one of the churches, uh, it was in the middle of nowhere, and she had big— The big question was about Trump's faith, and he's talking about real estate deals. This is how deeply spiritual he is. I mean, the, the number of people going every Sunday— and she said, you know, they've offered me money for this land. I can put it to very good use with all the people that need help. Uh, should I sell? I said, you might as well sell. Take the money right now because it can change real quick, really quickly. And uh, she'll go a little bit further out. And she just kept doing that. I said, this is a great business. This is pretty good. <laughs> but she. Ah, yes. The business of being a Christian pastor or thought leader or whatever she calls herself. It's a great business the money to great use and you've helped so many people and it's really great and uh, really nice. Maybe this is an answer from Trump and he to him. Faith means business deals to know you Thank really you, nice Pastor. to know you. Thank you. Look, we're going through a lot of problems in our country. If you take a look <laughs> at the anger, the the uh, the problems that we have and a lot of it is that it's less based on religion now than it was 25 years ago and 50 years ago. And I mean, we were a really people would say a Christian and really religious, even other faiths country. And that seems to be heading in the wrong direction. And I think as that goes uh, down, I think that our country goes down. I really do. I think this is a country that needs religion. It's like the glue that holds it together. And we don't we don't. So Trump's answer to what faith means to him is real estate deals being a professional Christian as a good business and that we have a lot of problems in our country. And it used to be the case that we were more religious. The real true answer of a man who has no religious or spiritual beliefs whatsoever. Now, Trump was also asked by Paula White about when he survived the assassination attempt and Trump says something very interesting. Here, all of us, we had a little help up there. And I would like to think, and I don't know this at all, but I would like to think that it's because he wants our country and maybe the world to be helped. <laughs> wants our country to be helped. God wants our country to be helped. It would be really, it would be a really nice thing to, uh, to say that. But now we have to win an election, too. Right. Um, God saved Trump, but killed one of his supporters who was not doing anything, just sitting there at the rally in order to show how great Trump and Trumpism are. No shortage of transphobia at this religious event. Common. My question is about your second term, because one of the big issues right now that this loser of an administration is inflicting on us is they've taken the entire power of the federal government, the Justice Department, the Department of Education, and they're trying to smash young women by making them compete against men Here we go. in athletics. And so these women are getting physically hurt. Uh, not only that, but they, they have to tolerate going into a locker room or a shower or a bathroom with biological men so they're losing their places of privacy. She also wants, as you know, Kamala Harris, to give surgeries to prisoners in our federal prisons. Remember that that was the policy under Trump. It has nothing to do with anything Kamala Harris does. System and illegal aliens to change their gender and use taxpayer money. Sir, you, you've raised this dramatically and consistently when a lot of Republicans won't talk about these issues. What do you plan to do on this in, uh, in your second term and uh, when we see you after Inauguration Day? So, and, and you know, it's almost, 
And Gary knows this better than anybody. It's almost amazing that we even have to have a question like that, isn't it? Because who would think right. that men should be playing in women's sports? <laughs> so anyway, it continues to be the case that the transphobia at these events ranks very highly, very highly with the audience. And then, of course, every so-called faith event that Trump does either starts or ends with people physically putting their hands on Trump and then praying. The difference is at this one, after the prayer was done, YMCA hits and the double jerk dances begin. And everything that pertains to what you have called him to carry out. And I ask for divine visitations that you would continue to give him your wisdom, according to James 1 5, that you would give him the mind of Christ, according to Philippians 2 5, that you said in Psalm 33, that blessed is the nation whose Lord is God. And we just thank you for our fighter of faith and for freedom and for religion, God. And most of all, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. If you're only listening, they're all touching Trump right now. Pastor Jensen and uh, Pastor Travis, Pastor Jensen, I know you'll close it out here and pray over him. Last night you mentioned that the other team are vessels. But I want you to know, and we want you to know, we believe you're a vessel. Amen. You're a I believe you're an empty vessel filled with Diet Coke and Whoppers with the E. coli onions. You are a vessel increasingly filled with McDonald's. Chosen vessel. That's a Bible verse in the book of Acts that said Paul was a chosen vessel. And we're praying for God's blessing on your life. This guy's a vessel. All right. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance, his favor upon you and give you peace and blessing and bless this nation. And we pray it all in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, President Trump, we want to say thank you so much. We love you, we value you, we're praying for you. But I'm telling you guys, we've had a lot of praise and worship and a lot of great speakers and a lot of great information and we're activated. Now, it just would not be a President Trump meeting without going out with a little bit of a dance. So here we go. Get your dance on. YMCA. Oh, dear God, please end the political career of this man. Please end it on Tuesday, folks. I, I I'm out of words. We just we can't do four more years of this. We just we can't. We shouldn't have to do it, please. Uh, on Maria Bartiromo's program, once again, the idea of deploying the military against supporters of Kamala Harris was brought up by Donald Trump. This is no joke, my friends. This is a very, very dangerous guy. Are you expecting chaos on Election Day? No, I don't think so. not from the side that votes for Trump. Right. Not from the only side that's ever generated chaos, Maria. But I'm just wondering if these outside agitators will start up on Election Day. Let's say you win. I mean, let's not let's let's remember you've got 50,000 Chinese nationals in this country in the last couple of years. Yeah. You have people on the terrorist watch list, 350 in the last couple of years. You got, uh, like you said, 13,000 murderers and 15,000 rapists. Right. Um, <laughs> what are you expecting? Like you falsely said. And Joe Biden said he doesn't think it's going to be a peaceful Election Day. Well, he doesn't have any idea what's happening in North Carolina. He spends most of his day sleeping. Uh, I think the bigger problem is the enemy from within. Oh boy. Not even the people that have come in and destroying our country. By the way, totally destroying our country. The towns, the villages, they're being inundated. But I don't think they're the problem in terms of election day. I think the bigger problem are the people from within. We have some very bad people. We have some sick people, radical left lunatics. And I think they're the big, and, and it should be very easily handled by, if necessary, by National Guard or if really necessary, by the military. The problem is the enemy within, a.k.a. fellow Americans who just don't agree with me. And if we need the military, we're going to use it. Terrifying.
And meanwhile, J.D. Vance was asked about Trump regularly saying this. And J.D. just tried to play it off like, oh, I don't what, what's the quote? I've never heard him say that. Well, Jake Tapper explains it. Says, and you'd much rather but, talk about what Donald Trump allegedly said than what, what Donald Trump publicly. did in office. I'm about what, what he, he said did publicly. in office, Jake, what he said publicly, one point five percent inflation. The military to go after the enemy within, which is the American people. He did not say that, Jake. The enemy he within. said that he was going to send the military after the American people. Should. Now, you all just heard it. You all just heard it. We, we just played. And, and it's not just once that Trump said it. He says it all the time. And J.D. plays this game. Tell me the quote where he, he said, said he was going to. He said the, Ameri the enemy within far left lunatics. He's talking like about the people Pelosi's rioting and he, he's talking about people rioting after the election. I think the Pelosi's were said, rioting after the election. He said you're Adam you're, Schiff you're was rioting after the separate, election. You're using two separate phrases. He said about using the military that far left lunatics, people who riot in the wake of an election, people who burn down American cities in the summer of 2020. Yes, we should have a federal law enforcement This is response. what he said to Joe Rogan on Friday. The enemy within that he wants the military to go after. No, he, no this the is enemy the within. Look at J.D. try to prevent Jake Tapper from reading it. The bigger you problem than Kim Jong-un. the second part. We have, to, we have people that are really bad people that I really think want to make this country unsuccessful. That's who the and, enemy and, within. And he's, yeah, I mean, that that's not violent. That's just, they want the country to be unsuccessful as per Trump's interpretation of their political views. And therefore the military or the national guard should be deployed against them. This is what's on the ballot. It's what's on the ballot. And so if you're not worried about it, then there's maybe one way to vote. I'm worried about it. I don't know how else to express it. The world is horrified by this and if Trump as president isn't a scary enough motivation to you to go and vote, think about J.D. Vance as being a heartbeat away from the presidency and how scary that is. We've endorsed J.P., right? J.D. Mandel. I'll be voting. That's for sure. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back with your feedback right after this. If you value what we do at The David Pakman Show, remember to support us on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash David Pakman Show, where you can get access to behind the scenes videos, the daily bonus show, the commercial free daily show. You can support the show for as little as two dollars a month. Check it out at patreon.com slash David Pakman Show. Let's get into Friday feedback, the final Friday feedback feed bag until the 2024 election. We put a poll out to those on our YouTube channel asking which swing state is where Kamala Harris should spend the most time until Election Day. Seventy three percent of those who voted said it is Pennsylvania and the other 27 percent divided up amongst other states. I agree with this. If you look at all of the different scenarios. Could Michigan be the deciding state in this election? Yeah, it could. Could it be North Carolina? Uh, it, it could if Harris were to win, but it doesn't look like she will. Could it be Arizona or Wisconsin? It could be, but it's not likely. In so many scenarios, Pennsylvania is indeed the state that could determine who is the next president of the United States. So in that sense, yeah, it makes a lot of sense that if you had you, you have limited resources, where do you focus if it's one of these five? I agree that it's Pennsylvania. Seventy three percent of the hundred and twenty three thousand of you who voted agreed. Let's see where Kamala Harris does spend these last few days. I love this question from the uh, subreddit from a, a, a user named Tranquil, who says almost indignant. Why is Harris tied with Trump? Harris is running against one of the most idiotic, moronic presidential candidates in American history. Why is she in a tie in the polls right now? Why are Democrats so bad at what they do? She should be polling in the 80s against Trump. This is a testament to the overall weakness of the Democratic Party. It wouldn't be surprising if she loses. If she wins, we lose anyway. She's a textbook right wing Democrat who will maintain the status quo for four years. Well, the last part I disagree with. I don't see any evidence that Kamala Harris is a status quo textbook Democrat. In fact, on paper, she's running to the left of Biden, who ran to the left of Obama, who ran to the left of virtually every Democrat major uh, Democratic Party candidate 
in decades. So that I very much disagree with. But the answer to this question, and it's not that you don't have responsibility as the candidate. Obviously, you have responsibility as the candidate. If Kamala Harris doesn't win to a degree, it will be her fault and it will be the fault of the Democratic Party. And I will call it out. But we can't ignore that if you are in a country where tens of millions of people are willing to vote for Donald Trump, you can promise fee people free ponies and homemade ginger snaps. And some of them are still not going to vote for you because they've been so uh, targeted by the weaponization of propaganda and disinformation to some degree. I mean, listen, you've seen the Trump rally clips. I've seen the Trump rally clips when Luke Beasley and Adam Mockler and others, excuse me, others go and interview the Trump people with some of these people. It doesn't matter what you do. They're not going to vote for Kamala Harris. Either they're not going to vote for a Democrat, they're not going to vote for someone that they've been told is a Marxist socialist communist, or some of them aren't going to vote for a woman. Some of them aren't going to vote for a non white candidate. Some of them aren't going to vote for someone who's been VP to Joe Biden, right? You have all of these little enclaves. And so it doesn't matter if her tariff policy makes more sense than Trump's. It doesn't matter if her tax plan would actually do more for the average American rather than the wealthiest, which is what Trump's tax plan would. At some point, the facts don't matter. If you live in a country where tens of millions are willing to vote for someone like Trump, even the perfect Democratic candidate is not going to woo them. So I'm as scared as you are. I understand the confusion. It's a scary situation that we're in. A uh, user Miami Scooby wrote to me about my video on the MAGA manosphere and toxic masculinity. And I'm not going to read this whole thing, but I'm going to summarize the main point. And the main disagreement that Miami Scooby had with my analysis is that the models of masculinity that are cited in the video are too expensive for a lot of Americans. And I did not include this point in the discussion. It's a very good point. One of the things that it says here uh, that the, the Miami Scooby writes is how can you become a good community leader if you can't even provide for yourself? How can you help your neighbor? If you're barely staying afloat, a lot of the population is in an anxious survival state. The manosphere resonates because it says, hey, you take control of your life, clean your room, get out of your wretched situation. And if you do that, life will get better. The listeners feel heard and are given actionable advice, even if it's bad. Um, I think that that's a perfectly reasonable thing to include in the analysis. I did not include the financial assessment here, uh, the economic reality. But I do think it is indeed valid. But I, I also want to make another point about the economics with a lot of these manosphere gurus. They have expensive gym memberships. They're going to the gym twice a day. They're on expensive steroid regimens. That stuff costs money too. your average person making fifty two thousand dollars a year working a full time job, eight hours a day plus the commute. They can't go to the expensive gym at all. Potentially, uh, they can't go twice a day. They can't be eating clean in the way that a lot of these people describe. They can't afford the steroids that make them look the way they do. So I think there's an economic component uh, to that as well. Dave CC says Trump gets crazier and crazier. He glitches, talks nonsense and is more unhinged by the day. And yet his election chances and popularity are going up. Someone explain this. Trump's getting more insane. He glitches at rallies, talks about a dead man's unit, sways to music at town halls instead of answering questions, cancels interviews. He seems to be trying to lose the election, seems to be the opposite of logic. It's like the worse Trump behaves, the better he does. Seems Trump's popularity is inversely proportional to his sanity and goes on to rap by saying, I swear, if Trump at this point stood on stage and bit the head off a bat, he would win in a landslide. It's Kafka esque. I just don't understand it. Yeah, it goes back to what I said earlier. The analysis is correct. I, I, I agree with the example in a literal sense. I think if Trump did an Ozzy Osbourne and bit the head off of a, of a bat on stage, some people would find it weird but interesting. The Magats and Magapotamians and Magadonians would absolutely love the alpha move from Trump. Uh, and I don't know that it would really dissuade more voters than it would attract. I, I don't think the guy is going to lose his core support no matter what at this point. And it doesn't make sense. And it doesn't make sense because this American electorate doesn't make sense. If you just see that 
tens of millions voted for the guy before. That's all you need to know about the state of the, the electorate and the sad and sorry and terrifying state of the electorate. Uh, user FJ eight on YouTube says, remember, folks, Harris was not nominated. She was installed like a toilet. Yeah, you know, I've dealt with this talking point before. There was nothing democratic about how Harris became the nominee at this point, just hours before Election Day. It seems that the best response is if that's your primary concern, don't vote for her, you know, and we've delved into the details before. She was on the ticket that won the primary. She wasn't some random state senator or governor who was installed. The the winners of the primary were Biden Harris. Harris was part of that. And so it's not completely out of nowhere. Secondly, she wasn't just installed. She went and garnered the support of the delegates. The delegates decided. Now, you might say, well, she moved so quickly before anyone had a chance and you might not like it, but that's called strategy. And again, what I would say to you is if you do not like the way in which Kamala Harris immediately moved to court delegates, don't vote for her. But for most people, this election comes down to do we support the guardrails of our democracy or don't we? And so Kamala Harris ending up in this position the way she did is a secondary or tertiary issue to everyone I've spoken to. But once again, if the one thing you care about is not what does the winner say about the future of democracy? What does the winner do about the future of economics and health care and foreign relations? If you don't care about that and you care about I don't like the way Kamala was nominated, then it is absolutely appropriate for you not to vote for her. It, I mean, I'm not belittling it. I'm saying if that is what you most care about and you don't like how the DNC handled it, don't vote for Kamala Harris. What I do have a problem with is people who act like there's a legal issue here. Political parties can select their candidates however they want. And as voters, we can say, I reject that way of selecting a candidate and I'm going to vote for someone else or no one at all or write somebody else in. That's everybody's right. I care about democracy too much. And also she did secure the support of the delegates. She was on the primary ticket that ultimately won. And for me, was it a was it an awesome system? Would I design the system in this way? No. Is it acceptable given the circumstances and given what's at stake? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right. We also heard from Walter Dempsey, who says he's talking about referring to Trump. He's talking about criminals, not legal immigrants. Pacman, you do nothing but stir up division. Stop your pathetic gaslighting. Well, Walter, you're the one who's gaslighting. The individuals in Springfield, Ohio are not criminals. They are here legally with temporary protected status. If you don't like that, they get temp temporary protected status. Vote for a candidate who says they will remove that status. Trump is such a candidate. Trump has said, I, I'm going to kick them out anyway. I'm going to change the rule that allows them to have temporary protected status. OK, but as of this moment, they are here legally. David Stevenson said, you are a clown. President Trump has forgotten more about tariffs than you will ever know. Well, if he ever knew anything about tariffs, David, he does seem to have forgotten all of it. <laughs> I think I'll leave my response at that. He certainly seems to have no memory of how tariffs work via TikTok. This gentleman says, just curious, how much are you paid to make videos for the Democratic Party? Great work reporting the news. I appreciate the response. David Trump likes tariffs because it will discourage U.S. companies from buying from China to avoid the extra costs and instead purchase from U.S. companies or start producing in the U.S. By not purchasing from Chinese companies, it hurts the Chinese government. I'm sorry you embarrassed yourself on the podcast because you don't understand economics. Well, I do have multiple degrees in economics and I do understand tariffs and I get that your false belief is you put a tariff on China. Next thing you know, everybody's buying American. But of course, that's not how it works. And we've talked about that before. If you put a tariff on China, next thing you know, everybody's buying from Indonesia. And if Indonesia gets a tariff, next thing you know, they'll go to the next cheapest place. They'll go to Morocco. And if you say, well, what if they come to the United States because there's no other option? We don't even have supply chains in place 
for many of the goods and services, uh, goods and, and raw materials we get from other countries. And it could take a decade to do so. So I get what you think would happen. You just don't know anything about economics. And as far as how much I get paid by the Democratic Party, I get paid zero. I'm not a Democrat. Uh, and and I don't even know why the Democratic Party would pay me. I mean, I just I say what I think on the show. That's it. All right. Info at David dot com. Get your emails in just days left until this very consequential election will be behind us, which I have to admit I'm looking forward to because it's been it's been a rough one. It's been a rough one. We will see you on the bonus show. Get instant access by signing up at joinpacman.com. And then I'll be back Monday for the last of two pre election shows. Thanks a lot for watching today's show. I just want to take a second to tell you about today's sponsors. If you struggle with sleep, melatonin can be a great option proven to work without the crazy side effects you can get with prescription drugs. The most relaxing way to enjoy melatonin before bed is with a hot mug of dream hot cocoa with melatonin from our sponsor beam. It comes in a variety of delicious flavors, naturally sweetened with no added sugar and only 15 calories. I'm a big fan of the cinnamon cocoa flavor. Beam has a special early access Black Friday discount only available to my audience. No other show gets this discount. My audience gets up to 50 percent off when you go to shopbeam.com slash David and use the code David. I've been recommending you try Beam for a while now. This is their biggest discount of the year. So now is the time. Link is in the description. Upgrade your sleep with the award winning pod Four ultra by eight sleep, a smart mattress cover that fits easily over your existing mattress with adjustable temperature settings ranging from 55 to 110 degrees. You and your partner can each enjoy customized comfort on your own side of the bed. I keep mine at 60 to stay cool throughout the night. It even includes smart technology to adjust your mattress position, help reduce snoring. Plus, you'll have 30 days to see if it's the right fit for you. Visit 8sleep.com slash Pacman and enter code Pacman for $350 off. The link is in the description.